Hi, welcome back. A friend of mine, a watchmaker, asked me if I could make him some one millimeter brooches to cut internal square holes into some tiny watch parts. And my first idea was this. A classical multi-stage brooch that cuts the hole in, in this case, two steps. It has a pilot diameter on the front and yeah, cuts in two steps to reduce the needed cutting forces. But then I realized that I would need a awful fine grinding wheel to get the sharp internal corners, even if I underground them slightly, which would reduce the strength of the tool to a great amount. Um, I decided that this design is just impractical for this purpose and I switched over to a much simpler design. This is just a one millimeter square ground on the end of a high-speed steel shank with some back taper and a spherical indentation on the front to give it a kind of positive cutting action when roaching the hole. The hole will of course be pre-drilled with a one millimeter drill and just the corners will be broached out. So a small lathe like the Schaublin 70 he's going to use will not have much problems to broach this. I set my dial indicator on the, on the cross feet. I set my stop for the table movement. So I'm only moving in like this. Um, this is six and a half millimeters, a little bit more than I need, but the grinding wheel has a radius sound here and I want a nice lead out and still be able to go deep enough with this punch without having any problems. So I'm going to grind it a little bit longer. It will not get very uh, prone to breaking because it's just pushed in straight. So let's go. I'm using a CBN cup wheel and I take relatively light cuts of about 0.05 millimeters per pass, just stepping down to final dimension. I'm using an indicator to monitor the travel of the cross slide on the grinder. And after I'm in far enough, I index the rotary head around and do the next side of the square. I still leave some material on for checking and uh, grinding to final dimension. Also you see that the high speed steel blank gets some color. Uh, it's not ideal but this is a high speed steel cobalt 12 blank and they have a very high tolerance uh, to heat. It's almost impossible to to anneal them back to a soft state just by heating them up. Even if you hit them with an oxy fuel torch, you basically cannot anneal them. After they cool down, they will just be as hard as before or even slightly harder. I tried this at work. Um, took a high speed steel plank, put it under the, the Rockwell tester, heated it up with the oxy fuel torch checked it again after it cooled down. No change in hardness at all. What can happen are micro fractures in the material due to uneven heating, but uh, I hope this doesn't happen here. <laughs> okay, there we go. It's a bit hard to mic this because it has half, an, half a degree of back uh, back rake so we can move the mic in this direction a little bit Yeah, and as I said 1.4 and some change and There we go now we should have 1.02 1. 
There we go. Now we have 1.01. We'll grind a little bit from the front of the punch to get it properly sharpened. So we'll drop it down to one millimeter in the process of doing that. Uh, yeah, but that's that's punch grinding with the tool and cutter grinder. Um, could do this without a problem on the debit grinder, but I want to get um, some confidence in using this machine. I added just a little bit of a hollow grind on the front cutting edge to give it a kind of positive cutting action. This should reduce cutting forces a little bit. And it's, it's really easy to do that. Clamp the part in the lathe and the collet, let it spin relatively slow. Then I have my die grinder here uh, with a small diamond, with a round diamond grinding tip. And I'm just going to hollow out the front a little bit. Here's a microscope view of the brooch. You can see the, the hollow grind on the front and the kind of rough surface of the hollow ground because the diamond uh, grinding tool I was using is, has a relatively coarse grit sides. But for a test tool it will work out. Also I marked the 0.5 degree back taper that I ground into the tool per side so it doesn't rub in the broached square hole. I think I should show you at least one test cut with one of these tools. Uh, one millimeter square brooch, piece of uh, AP20 Sandwick tool steel, pre-drilled one millimeter and I'm adding some cutting oil And here goes nothing. Whoop. Went in almost 2.5 millimeters and now I can feel the chips compacted down in the hole. Uh, if you want to go deeper now you would have to come in with a drill bit, clear out the, the chips that have been pushed down by the brooch and brooch deeper. Okay, I parted the end of the material off, put it under the microscope, and here you can see, for one, the terrible finish I get with the with the insert I was using on this material, but also you can see the one by one millimeter square that I broached into the material, and it looks quite decent. It has nice sharp corners, and came out relatively good. Killian was nice enough to send me a photo of one of the parts in progress still in a collet with the one millimeter square hole broached into it. He drilled them one millimeter and bored them to 1.1 millimeter. Boring to get the to get the run out perfect and 1.1 millimeter compared to the one millimeter that I planned because the forces with a one millimeter pre-drilled hole were just too high for the small shoveling lathe. And the small round section left from the pre-drilling is not an issue. So, looks pretty decent to me. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.